Good morning, dear students. Welcome to online video classes. Today we are going to study history and civics, and the chapter which we are going to study in civics is our constitution. Before starting today's chapter, let me tell you something about this syllabus, which has been changed by ICSC, or you can say reduced by ICSC. So, my dear students, in this chapter, when we will study, we have to add some portion of chapter number two and three in chapter of the constitution, and some of the portion of our constitution is not for your session to 2021. So, let's start with chapter our constitution. students today we will cover these topics in our video class definition of constitution date of adoption date of enforcement and its significance single citizenship universal aided franchise fundamental rights fundamental duties directive principles and welfare state now let's start with Definition of Constitution. Now, definition of Constitution of India. Or definition of Constitution. A Constitution is a set of rules that guides how a country, state, or the pol other political organization works. The Constitution may tell what the will branches, what, what the branches of the government are what powers they have and how they work. It also may state the rights of citizens. In that condition, we can say constitution is a comprehensive document containing the set of rules. It regulates the position and powers of the three organs of the government, the legislative and the executive and judiciary. The states, how they are interrelated. It assumes spatial importance as it moderates the relation between government and governed. It is also a way of ruling the country. Dr. Bhimra Ambedkar, popularly known as Baba Sahib, was one of the architects of Constitution of India. He was an eminent jurist, economist, politician, and social reformer. Now, date of adoption informs enforcement of constitution and its significance. When we will study about this, we will find that the constitution was adopted and passed by the Constituent Assembly on November 26. 1949. The constitution was as a whole came into force with effect from January 26, 1950 because it was especially selected because of its historical importance. On this date 26 January in 1929 the Lahore session of Indian National Congress had for the first time given the call of Poon Swaraj. It means complete independence. It was celebrated as Independence Day up to 1947. After achieving independence on 15 August 1947 became the Independence Day. January 26 was designated as the Republic Day. Means law making day or on, on which date it came into force with effect of with effect from January 26, 1950 means constitution as has got or has come into effect from January 26, 1950. Now we will study about single citizenship. Single citizenship, the Indian constitution 
provides for a single citizenship. It means the constitution of India gives single citizenship to the people of the country. All the people irrespective of their states or territories in which they, are, they reside are the citizen of the country. This is unlike USA where a citizen is a citizen of USA and the state in which he, he or she resides. But it is totally opposite in India. You, you are living in any state of the country but you will get the citizenship of India. But if you are living in USA, in any state, you will get the citizenship of USA also and the state also. Now universal adult franchise or universal adult suffrage. Now as it is given in your book universal adult franchise means that the right to vote should be given to all adult citizens without discrimination of caste, color, religion or gender. It is based on equality which is basic principle of a democracy. In detail you can say adult franchise means all adult citizens of the country should have the right to vote without any discrimination of class, caste, religion or gender. It is based on the basic principle of democracy which we call equality. It stresses that the right to vote should be equally available to all. It, uh, it is the bedrock of a democratic system. It enables all citizens to be involved in the governance of their state. Franchise literally means the right of the people to vote and elect their representatives. The word franchise is derived from the French word franc, means free. In history, it took much time in making itself a universal law. In fact, this was one of the major demands in the long drawn struggle for democracy. Till date, not all the countries of the world are practicing this law. India had implemented this principle and on January 26, 1950. Now the minimum age for exercising franchise is 18 years in our country. One must qualify certain grounds for adult franchise in India. These are, one must be a citizen of India, one must have attained 18 years of age, one must not be of unsound mind, one must not have been declared bankrupt by any component of court. As per reduced slabs from ICSC, from this session, for this session only, we have to study only the names of fundamental rights. I am going to give you a very easy trick to learn fundamental rights. So, I think so most of you are familiar with this word FRC. FRC is nothing else, only fun it is a trick to learn fundamental rights. E for equality, F for freedom, abolition against exploitation, right to religion, right to cultural and educational rights, constitutional remedies and right to education. Now, I am going to tell it in a brief manner. When we will start FRC, the first letter is E. E symbolizes here right to equality. Equality means here equality before law, equality of opportunity, abolition of untouchability, abolition of titles. Means equality in all sense. Caste, color, religion, no one, nothing can be discriminate any human being. Now, F stands for right to freedom. A stands for right against exploitation. Exploitation in sense human trafficking, child labor and other type of exploitation can be uh, opposed by the right to right against exploitation. Now, R stands for right to freedom of religion in that all persons are entitled to the freedom of conscience and the right of 
religion they can propagate and practice and pray their own religion in their own way there is a freedom of religion it can call as right to freedom of religion it is a fundamental right now frc's first c stands for cultural and educational rights now second c of frc stands for right to constitutional remedies it means wherever you find any uh, change in constitution it had done by the parliament where the members of the parliament feel a uh, member of the parliament member of the parliament feel that there should be some changes or remedy should be in constitution they used to remedy the constitution according to this right right to constitutional remedies wherever uh, the you as you know already that fundamental rights are justiciable and supreme court high court can interfere in any matter like this and if anyone is feeling some problem and there should be a matter of constitutional matters it can be solved by it that a writ can be passed by the supreme court or high court and that can be filed in parliament and by the parliament sessions the constitution can be uh, changed or we can remedy it now last word e alphabet is e so alphabet e stands for right to education according to 86th amendment of constitution act 2002 2 and article 21a provides free education from age of 6 to age of 14 so the children those who are uh, in, under this age from 6 to 14 they can get free education according to the right of right to education which we used to say rte the fundamental duties now we will study about the fundamental duties as we have fundamental rights also on other hand we have some fundamental duties we are abide by that such as a to abide by the constitution and respect its deals and institution the national flag and national anthem we have to give respect to our national ideals institution flag and national anthem b to cherish and follow the noble ideas which inspired our national struggle for freedom c to uphold and protect so the sovereignty unity and integrity of india it's a fundamental duty to protect our country's unity also to defend the country and and the render national service when called upon to do so means wherever our country needs our service we have to provide our render service to the country e to promote harmony and a spirit of common brotherhood among us all the people of india transcending religious in linguistic religional or sectional diversity we have to practice these all thing to the dignity of women also to well now f to value and preserve the rich heritage of composite culture composite culture means we have lots of culture in india and the these thing is called as composite culture this term is called as composite culture and we have to value and preserve it now g is to protect and improve natural environment including forests lakes rivers wildlife and have compassion for living creatures such as to protect trees forest animals and other natural heritage of the country is a sorry is a fundamental duty now h to develop the scientific temper humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform i to safeguard public property and to abjure violence such as 
we have to save up uh, national property public property uh, so you have seen earlier also some people those who who were uh, you can say uh, indulged or you can say involved in some ill activities they used to hit or exploit the public transports and public property such as on uh, you can say any type of religious conflict you have seen the people were uh, used to burn the cars parks schools libraries and bus you can take example of latest conflict of delhi also but we have to secure it we have to protect all these things and we have to oh, avoid these types of situations that we sh uh, it is our duty to protect our country and its public property now j to starve and towards excellence in all spheres of individual collectivity k it is the duty of parent or a guardian to provide opportunities for education to his child or as the case may be ward between the age of 6 and 14 years means a person who is having a child under from the age 6 to 14 it's his duty a parent's duty to provide opportunity for education to his to his child it is this the last uh, duty is added by the constitution amendment 86 at act 2002 article 21 as the right to education now directive principles of state the directive principle of state policy of india dpsp are the guidelines of or 15 principle given to the federal institutes governing the state of india to be kept in situation while framing the laws and policies these provisions contained in part for article 36 to 51 of the constitution of india are not enforceable by any court means are unjusticiable it means directive principles are not justiciable but the principles laid down in there are considered in the governance of the country making it the duty of the state to apply these principles making laws to establish a just society in the country principles have been inspired by the directive principles given in the constitution of ireland which are related to the social justice economic welfare foreign foreign policy and legal administrative matters directive principles are classified under the following categories economic socialist political administrative justice and legal some there environmental protection monuments peace and security also so in that sense in a single sense or another sense you can see directive principles of state policies are some principles for the governing body of the country to govern the state of india and to set some rules before making any rule or governing the countries these 15 principles are a uh, you can say a measure or uh, a model to see how to control and how to make the law for the country and for governing the country it's there are 15 principles which come under this heading directive principles of state policy now welfare state a welfare state which seeks to ensure the maximum happiness of the maximum number of people living within its territory the aims and objectives of welfare state are clearly pointed out in the directive principles of state policy these principles or these directive emphasizes that the goal of indian polity is a welfare state where the state has positive duty to ensure its citizens social economic justice and dignity to the individual means happiness for all somewhere right to education 
scholarships reservation system according to which caste and scheduled tribe scheduled caste and scheduled tribes will get jobs and education also untouchability is banned and the government has abolished the zamindari system and introduced the land reform program to do the do away with the old feudal structure of rural india nationalism nationalization of banks the government has launched various programs such as irdp rlegp to help the poor poor national food security act and now ayushman bharat yojana also so these types of all activities and work come under welfare state uh, in this pandemic we have one other option sorry one other scheme which is atmanirbhar bharat so these types of all is scheme and works of the government come under the welfare state so dear students today we have covered these topics in our video class before finishing today's video class let me tell you what where you will find these topics in your book because as icsc has reduced the syllabus there are some changes also so when we you will study about constitution and its definition date of adoption and enforcement date of enforcement and its significance you will find it in chapter 1 then single citizenship universal adult franchise fundamental rights and duties you will find it in chapter number 2 directive principles and welfare state you can find it in the chapter number 3 but all these points and topics are considered as chapter number 1 our constitution as it is prescribed by icsc for the session 2020 and 21 for class 9 thank you